Let's talk. You know, I needed this. Exploring the galaxy with you by day. Fasco never appreciated my humor that much. Hmm. I was just remembering how I'd pour my heart out to them. I told him all about Irvin. Oh, we got to point B many... Anyway, I'm glad you're here right now because we have... I heard back from my contact. They looked into Hephaestus Mining Corporation. Looks like they paid off the judge. And thanks to our contact, we now have the receipts. Bank transactions. A precise amount was transferred to the judge only the day before the ruling. No, my contact does for now. I trust them. We worked together a long time ago. And it depends on what I want to do with all the proof. If anything. I'm glad you're confident already. I'm not, though. I'm worried we don't have enough evidence to go up against a massive corporation like that. So I know a cyber runner who has accessed corporate archives before. They can dig into the classified archives before we go to a lawyer. We can pay extra for them to use less legal methods to obtain information, but that adds risk. I don't know. I guess that's a good question for a lawyer. That's definitely wise, and absolutely why I'm glad I asked you. I think I can do some digging in public records on my own. So I might. That's much safer. Depending on what they find out, it might be time to talk to a lawyer. I'll see if I can find one. Whew. Taking on Hephaestus isn't going to be easy. And I say this as someone who's fought the Crimson Fleet. Maybe I should study up on the art of cross-examination. Might come in handy at the trial. That's solid advice. Know your actual limitations, and not the ones granted to you by a mysterious superpower. Anyway, let's go adventure while we wait on the cyber runner to get back to us. Ambitious, even for a simple computer. 
We might as well be asking it to count every grain of sand in every desert on Earth. Who came up with these original equations? Our partner isn't being very open about it. Every question I have goes through some discretionary channel. I'm surprised we even know we're working on a ship. They should be running it purely in the vacuum of space. But hey, good marketing material. Uh, I've been spending some off hours running some dumb simulations just because I can. My favorite so far is simulating the sound of every duck on Earth quacking after receiving a piece of bread. You didn't know you wanted a real-time sim of feeding all the ducks, but now you have it. <laughs> You're welcome, humanity. Everybody evacuated fast. Nova Galactic Project Log, Principal Engineer Lang Shu. I admit, this is not the most disciplined team I've ever run. Malcolm keeps stealing computational time on Voltaire, and thinks I don't know this. And Sabine has been distracted lately, but won't tell anyone why. I really should demand answers from both of them. But honestly, I'm too preoccupied with this contract. We all are. Despite anything going on in our personal lives, there's something special about what we're building here.
get jealous? You know, the crew in the shipyard? Building the actual vessels that are gonna travel the stars? We're literally on a base on the moon. Oh, come on, Sabina. I'm trying to share my dreams here. Well, your dreams are always out there and never here where the rest of us live. Can't you just be happy doing your job? Where's the fun in that? Okay, confession time. Being single on a moon base is the worst. I only get like an hour to use the communication link to Earth every couple of days. And let me tell you, there's long distance dating, and then there's like long distance dating, you know? Oh, hey there, I'm a scientist, deadly employed, willing to take you out for coffee in like six months when I'm back from space. <laughs> It's not a great opening line. <sighs> you seriously can't get a date? You're an astronaut! Hey, no one asked you. You seem overwhelmed with things here. Let's take a moment to sort it out.
When I accepted the assignment up here, we were told to bring a couple of personal items. Some psychological studies said it helps when you're away from Earth this long. I brought my grandmother's old abacus. I would play with it on her lap, and she'd teach me the Russian for all the numbers. She, uh... just... got word that she passed. The next shuttle isn't for three months, so I'll, uh... I won't be able to go to the funeral. <sighs> Goodbye, Babushka. Thank you for teaching me math. It brought me to the moon. Concerns this morning before the launch. All signs green. Any changes to the calculation sequence from Voltaire? No changes since we uploaded the last figures yesterday. It's a clean shot from here to Jupiter. One day the computer will be on board the spaceship. Just imagine that. One miracle of science at a time, Canaveral. Counting down in five, four, three, two, one. look good. A ship should be cruising Jupiter's orbit right now. Visual confirmation will be possible in <laughs> 32 minutes. Afraid the speed of light is on the slow side these days. <laughs> How does it feel to break the laws of physics, Canaveral? We're all pretty excited down here in NASA, I won't lie. Excited enough to tell me where you got the original data? Not in a million years. Nova. Do we actually need all that stuff?
Hey, you're up. Perfect. We have so much to do to see. NASA. This is one of the towers that got us to safety among the stars. inside NASA. Might need to work through some rubble. It was over.
Looks like this one almost made it to launch. Wonder what the final... Lay it on me. All righty. area. I can't imagine how tense and chaotic it must have been. Dr. Judith Tatien, the recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Eiser comes with two members of the military. Everything they've brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I've been trying to cause you up to Dr. Eiser. Victor, 
to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little gray man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I... I think I'm being invited into the lab. Station log. Dr. Judith Satin. I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was just to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I... I don't know how much I should say, but the periodic table just got thrown out the window. Place is a museum now. <laughs> anyway, looks like an exit at the end of the hall. 